Hello everybody, this is Dr. Noor Badshah. Continuing with the descriptive statistics, today's lecture is about data description. How do we describe data? So, let us talk about measure of central tendency uh, in, in this lecture and then we will be proceeding with other uh, data description types as well. Uh, okay, so what is the measure of central tendency and what are uh, their types or what are the techniques we used for measuring the central tendency for a given data. So, the measure of central tendency it is a descriptive statistics and uh, this is used to describe the given data. Describing given data by using a single value with some uh, more information as well. So, mm, commonly used measures of central tendency are the averages, the quartile, quantiles and we also talk about the mode. These are the, the commonly used measures of central tendency. We will be talking in this lecture about the averages mainly in this lecture. Later on I will be talking about the quantiles, we will be talking about the mode as well. So, what is average? Obviously, it is a descriptive quantity which is used for description of data that is finding a central value which describe the given data. So, main types of uh, uh, averages are arithmetic mean, geometric mean and harmonic mean. If the data has arithmetic behavior, so arithmetic mean is a good representation or give good description of the data. We will be talking about finding arithmetic mean when we have raw data, if the data is not organized and that obviously happen when we have small data in size. We will be also using arithmetic mean, or, uh, you need to learn how to find arithmetic mean when the data has a frequency but it has not got groups or classes and we will be uh, discussing how do you find arithmetic mean in case of grouped frequency data. Geometric mean is uh, uh, suitable in the data when the data has some geometric behavior. I am not talking that it is geometric progression, it should have a geometric behavior and obviously, we will be computing, computing it for or uh, we will be learning how to find geometric mean in all these three cases. If we have raw data, if we have frequency data and we have grouped frequency data. If the data has harmonic behavior, in that case usually harmonic mean is will be used and that is a suitable a representation or gives suitable description of the data which will be done for raw data, frequency data and grouped frequency data. Let us talk about arithmetic mean first which is a very simple measure and uh, obviously uh, most of the students know about it how to do it. So, first you need to learn arithmetic mean to be computed from raw data. We usually consider two types of data, one is a population data. So, if we compute uh, a characteristic from uh, a population data, usually that is termed as parameter and if we do same thing from sample, we call it statistic or estimator. So, uh, first we define what is uh, uh, population mean, which is obviously termed as a parameter and that is denoted by mu that is a special notation used for uh, population mean is mu. The number of observations are the size of the population that would be represented by capital N and that is very simple formula. We are adding all the given observations and dividing that by the total number of observations. So, we have summation uh, x i divided by total number of observation. The formula in case of uh, sample data is also same. You see, uh, but, but the notations are different, obviously the concept is different. This uh, x bar will be considered as an estimator of uh, this, this mu and the notation for um, obviously mean uh, sample mean is x bar and that again is a summation of all observation dividing by the sample size. Keeping in mind the sample size is usually represented by small n. So, you see the formula looks similar, uh, the only difference is what that is uh, notation different 
and the, the, the sample size notation is different as well the population from population size yeah the concept is different obviously you are computing something from a population it gives you the actual value whereas if you compute something from a sample that give you estimated value for the uh, parameter and usually statistics are used to, to uh, estimate parameter ok so uh, let us do an example for it you see we have this data uh, for a number of uh, days of per year for a sample for a sample it is mentioned it is a sample of individuals selected from nine different countries what would they mean so uh, in this case obviously we will be using x bar and n in this case is also uh, we can mention that is 9 ok so adding all these numbers together and dividing it by 9 so the mean uh, is what that is 30.7 days we may consider 31 days of um, the mean number of days of is 30.7 or 31 days uh, let's do another example you see 110 76 29 38 105 31 uh, these are the number of patients in a in a sample of six hospitals who acquired an infection while hospitalized so what would be the mean now if you observe the data uh, there, there, there are some jumps in the data you see 110 then with 76 29 and so on the data has not got uh, arithmetic behavior so if you find the mean you can find it obviously but the mean is not suitable because you see 64.5 it may 64.8 we may consider that as 65 but you see 65 is not representing not presenting this data properly so it means in this case and uh, this type of data the arithmetic mean would not be a suitable one right uh, sometimes we are given weights for uh, different observations and in that purpose you need to find a uh, weighted mean or weighted arithmetic mean so for certain uh, observations xi if we have uh, corresponding weights to be omega i then their weighted uh, mean can be defined as x omega bar and you have to multiply every observation by its weight corresponding weight and then we add them and dividing by the uh, sum of weights so we have uh, summation i equal to 1 up to n omega i x i divided by summation i equal to 1 up to n omega i uh, that will give you a weighted mean for a certain data right let's do an example uh, let's suppose uh, the midterm score of uh, a student is 83 and uh, the final score is uh, 95 if you it is mentioned that uh, midterm has a 40 percent of weight whereas final term has 60 percent weight so what would be the computer what would be the uh, uh, weighted average of, of the score and secondly if the minimum average required for a grade is 90 so in this case if you have 40 percent so if you have 83 marks in midterm exam whereas 95 in final term exam would you get uh, in a so obviously uh, the weights are 0 0.4 and uh, 0.6 40 percent that basically means 0 0.4 whereas 60 percent that basically means 0 0.6 so uh, let's let's find the the arithmetic the weighted arithmetic mean multiplying uh, 0 0.4 with 83 because midterm score has 40 percent uh, uh, weight whereas final term has a 60 percent weight so 95 multiplied by 0 0.6 dividing by some of the weights so that would give you simply 90.2 so you see that 90.2 is the weighted mean and it is greater than 90 so that is why you will get uh, you will earn an A grade yeah the same uh, idea can be can be applied in 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 business as well if uh, uh, in a store 50 percent of the computers uh, they, they are sold on 700 dollars whereas 30 percent are sold on 1000 dollars and 20 percent are sold at 1500 dollars and uh, now you see the fractions will be what 0 0.5 here 50 percent basically means uh, 0 0.5 the fraction will be whereas 30 percent means 0 0.3 0 0.2 the weighted mean will be what that is simply multiplying 0 0.5 with 700 0.3 with 1000 and 0 0.2 with 1500 and dividing by their sum but you see that 50 plus 30 plus 20 percent is 100 percent and 100 percent means basically one so we are dividing here by one so the weighted mean in this case will be 950 dollars okay 
Right. So, uh, let us uh, move toward the properties of arithmetic mean. Uh, the first property of arithmetic mean is what? That sum of uh, mean deviation is uh, 0. It means if you subtract mean from every observation and then we add those sums, those, those deviations, the resulting sum will be 0. Mathematically, that means summation x i minus x bar that is equal to 0. Okay. This can be proved easily. Uh, you see, uh, if you want to prove, find this quantity, so we simply take summation uh, x i, applying summation on both sides, and then we have uh, minus summation x bar, right? So, you know that summation x bar is if I multiply and divide this summation x i by n. So, I would simply dividing it by n and then you know that x bar is constant. So, sum of x bar will be n times x bar. So, you see this is also x bar. We have uh, n times x bar minus n times x bar would cancel each other and that would give you the right hand side which is obviously equal to 0. Right? That is the proof. It is a very simple proof you see. Uh, so, sum of mean deviation is always 0. In case of frequency data, you have to multiply this with frequency summation f into x i minus x bar that would be 0. Okay, uh, the next property is sum of uh, uh, mean deviation is uh, al squared mean deviation is what that is always minimum. Sum of squared mean deviation is minimum which basically means if you take uh, a dev deviation of mean from every observation and then you take it square okay and then you add them and if you take any number other than x bar and you take deviation of that number from every observation and taking square this quantity will always be smaller than this quantity again uh, it can be proved easily as well so that is uh, you see, if you consider summation x i minus uh, a squared, so what do we do? We may introduce this x bar because we want to express this quantity in terms of uh, x bar. So, I may subtract x bar and I also add x bar as well. So, we have x i minus x bar plus x bar minus a keeping in mind x bar is constant a is also constant now if we open this uh, uh, square by by using binomial theorem so we have uh, what we can write that a summation x i minus x bar squared plus x bar minus a squared with summation and then we have plus 2 times that is constant and x bar minus a is constant. We will be having simply a uh, summation x minus x bar and you know that x minus x bar summation is again sum of mean deviation. So, this term will become 0 okay, and this will become simply n. So, we have something like that summation x i minus a whole square that would become x i minus x bar square. plus as I said this is a constant quantity. So, we have n times x bar minus a x is constant x bar is constant sorry x uh, a is constant. So, x bar minus a will be constant and then applying summation on it it would give you simply n times x bar minus a. Now, if you remove this quantity from here you want to remove this quantity because this is what this is sum of two quantities okay? this one and this one. 
Now, if you remove this one, what would happen? Will this not become larger? A simple example, if we have, let's suppose we write 12 is a number which could be written as uh, 3, 9 plus 3, let's suppose. 12 is equal to 9 plus 3. So, if you want to uh, find a relation between 12 and 9, what would happen? You have to remove this 3 from here. When you remove 3 from here, 12 will become greater than 9. The same thing here, if you remove this quantity from here, from here, what would happen? This quantity would become greater than this one. So, that is the proof simply. And it's obviously, it's important to find later on, we'll be talking about variance and standard deviation. So, this, 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 this uh, property is important. Okay, the next uh, uh, property is, if uh, the data is transformed linearly, y i is equal to a x i plus b, then uh, the y bar, that's the mean of the updated, the transformed data will be uh, found from the mean of the existing data. You have to uh, uh, transform the given mean as well. And it is very simple. The proof is simple. Summation y i that is equal to summation a x i on plus n b dividing both sides by n that will give you simply this proof. So, if you uh, it means if you transform the data linearly you do not need to find mean again you simply transform the mean of the given data accordingly. Okay. Uh, now, how do you find mean from ungrouped frequency data when, when we are given some observations and their corresponding frequencies? So, frequencies can be considered as weights, but keeping one thing in mind, weights may or may not be uh, frequency because frequency means that it, the importance uh, of, of an observation uh, can be determined by its repetition. The most the observation is repeated, the most uh, important that observation would be. So, frequencies can be considered as weights, whereas weights may or may not be considered as frequencies because uh, weights could be in fraction, they could be in percentage, whereas uh, uh, frequencies are always uh, 